inside. Today, we are painting space wolves. I said we are painting space wolves. Oh. Thank you. Recently, Wolvencraft sent me a Space Marine model and told me to paint it for him and then post it back. The nerve. You know what he said to me? He said, if you paint this Space Marine up as a Space Wolf, then you could use it as a tutorial for others to follow along. Are you kidding me? Why can't you just paint the model yourself? I don't have time for this. Do you have any idea how busy I am? It's not actually a bad idea. I might in fact do it, but not because you told me to. Fine, okay, let's do it. Here's how it works. You've seen the thumbnail so that you know how the model turns out, but this is pitched at the beginners and will be a step-by-step -step guide for you guys to follow along, and you'll be able to end with a model that looks the same as mine. Along the way will be some jokes and also some lore to help break up the action and keep you guys entertained. The selected model for today is a Space Marine Primaris Lieutenant with Storm Shield because there's a little bit of everything going on and we can look at some basic customization as well. There's no wolves on Fenris, but if you can't find a cheap Primaris Lieutenant on eBay, there's no helping you. eBay? Hold up, I have affiliate links. Gap Games, Miniature Market, Wayland Games and Mighty Ape. If you use any of the links in the video description below, it's no extra cost to you. Sometimes you get extra savings, but it helps support the channel. I've swapped out the head, one shoulder pauldron, and the ornament atop his tactical school bag to make him look a little more Space Wolves. Oh. Basic sub-assembly is your friend. This will help you paint those hard to reach places and avoid the frustration of making avoidable mistakes. Priming, light or dark, pros and cons to both. A light prime means that I really need to get in there and paint everything or it looks sloppy, but with a black prime, I can leave some of those parts and it just looks like natural shadow instead. I want my Space Marine armor to be a little bit lighter this time. And I know that I'm gonna end up with some bone and yellow colored armor panels, and those are 100 times easier to paint over the top of a light colored primer. The armor is the bulk of our Marine and it's a fun place to start. I can't find the exact color I want, so I'll create it with a mix of two paints, being the Fang and Rust Gray. This is a cool takeaway for our beginner painters. On Space Marine Armor, we often hear about using three colors, the base, the layer highlight, and then the edge highlight, and they are three often quite distinct colors. If you're a pro painter, you can pull this off, but for the rest of us, it might end up looking a little cartoony as we jump from color to color. I'm still going to use three colors here, but if we mix it up and down from a 50-50, we will still have shadows and highlights, but they will be calmer, and for us beginners who aren't perfect and steady-handed, our imperfections won't be jumping off the model at the viewer. We started our armor in the midpoint, the average of how I think it will end up looking, meaning we need to have areas darker and areas that are lighter from here. So for the thin shadows and panel lines, I'm mixing in a little Incubi darkness. By painting these lines in, this will give us contrast. These are the darkest parts of our armor, and when we finish, you'll be able to see... Wait, I've got a better idea. Check this. This is how the armor will end up looking for my Space Wolf. So here is my medium starting base coat that we've already completed. Here are these dark shadow lines, and still to come will be this layer and then this highlight. Pause here if you need to refer back to it. Yeah, that makes it easier. That stage is complete. So with the benefit of my previous image, I award you zero points for guessing what is next. Rust gray for my layer highlight. I'm no spring chicken, so my eyesight and steady hands like to betray me. So I find that a thin and tidy brush can save me and do most of the heavy lifting for me. And here's how he's looking so far. It feels like slow going, doesn't it? Well, it does, and the reason for that is we're only painting one model. If we were painting a batch of Space Marines, like a whole squad, we could have an assembly line where we paint this step across all of the Marines, picking them up one at a time, and then moving on to the next step. Overall, you save a bunch of time. 
Fenrisian Grey mixed with Rust Grey to act as my brightest highlight and I'm not too worried about areas that people can hardly see and I'm instead targeting the prominent raised areas. Keep this colour on your palette because we are going to use it again in under a minute. Battle damage is optional but I will say this, I've painted almost half a dozen complete armies now and the ones that I find the most interesting are ones that convey a story. If this Space Wolf had pristine armour, then that tells the viewer that he hasn't been in combat yet. Boring. But if I had a whole bunch of dints and scratches, then it looks like he's just finished punching a whole bus full of heretics to death before striking this iconic pose. To make the damage look three-dimensional, I'm using that bright highlight again and painting the underside of my dints and scratches just like this. Space Wolves have accent colours of red and yellow, so I block out these panels now. If I was painting a squad of infantry, I would probably choose one of these colours or select fewer panels so that even if your army-wide paint scheme is these three main colours, you can separate some of your squads and unit types by mixing up who gets what. The law aside for a minute, I might for example select a tactical squad to have a yellow shoulder pauldron and then on a squad of blood claws give them a red shoulder. This lieutenant though is so special that he can be adorned in all of the colours. A quick side note to say that if you have made it this far into the video without grabbing your keyboard, hitting caps lock and telling me that it's actually pronounced Lieutenant, I am so proud of you. Look at how far you and I have come. Language, it's a beautiful thing. You know what else is beautiful? That's right, not having to freehand paint any symbols. If you're good at it and you enjoy it, go your hardest. For the rest of us plebs, let's talk about decals. You've seen me apply them before, so I won't subject you to that magical experience, but once they are on, I look for ways to blend them into the surface. If I was using a wash, I would apply this now, but I want my yellow to stay bright, so I'm instead repeating the process of a couple of scratches. Not every part of your model needs to be some complex 15 step process and having a whole bunch of tidy but otherwise tame areas can help make the important parts really stand out. I'll want the armour, the plasma pistol and the shield to look cool so a lot of these other areas can get some basic attention and I'll be happy. I'll show you some of this base coating, shading and highlighting but rather than listing paints over and over, I'll add them up here in the top corner and instead talk a little about the Space Wolves. The Emperor's Sixth Legion and undeniably one of his most loyal with their unflinching allegiance to him. Comparatively, they are a small legion and operate as shock troopers. Fast and violent combat with a dramatic Viking flair to them. Space Vikings, Spikings, no one calls them that. Their Primarch is Lehman Russ, and he was raised by wolves on the ice planet of Fenris, which, despite being incredibly difficult circumstances to grow up, would also be a handy excuse if ever you got caught dragging your across the new rug. Space Wolves likely have low numbers within their ranks as a result of the gruelling trials that one must succeed in before even getting a sniff at entry into the Legion. Aspirants are selected from the tribes on Fenris and are equipped with the most basic of furs and weaponry before being sent in the extreme conditions of the wilderness. There they must hunt and kill a Fenrisian wolf and return with one of its fangs. The trials don't end there though and they grow increasingly more difficult. One stage involves passing through an ancient portal surrounded by molten lava. Now, I happened to ring ahead to the recruitment office and to my surprise, I was excited to discover that I was eligible for recognition of prior learning by demonstrating my skills as a father by being able to navigate our hallway at midnight and not step on the scattered pieces of Lego. So there you go, if you're new to the world of Warhammer 40,000, there's a little taste of the background of the Space Wolves. I said, there's a little taste of the background of the Space Wolves. There's a variety of layers and highlights going down with the majority you can work out because no techniques have changed. However, both the leather holster and the shield will have some new elements, so let's take a look at them. The holster just had a thin shadow of a darker brown and now I'm creating a worn cracked leather look by instead of an edge highlight, I'm painting these short sharp marks. First with a medium brown and then with a bone color. 
The sharper the brush, the better. And if you find stages like this difficult, consider the brush you are using. I've been using Rosemary & Co brushes for around five years, and now they also support my channel. There's a link below in the video description for the exact ones I use if you're in the market for some affordable and high quality brushes for your minis. That was some similar scratches going onto the casing of the plasma pistol, and now that I'm onto the shield, I've started with a base coat of Wraithbone before highlighting with a bright white. Here's our new technique though for you to try next. This is Fire Slayer Flesh Contrast Paint mixed with Contrast Medium and then thinner. Look at how weak this colour is now, like a good British tea. This, this right here is an easy glaze for our bone colours. I'm painting downwards on the shield and lifting my brush at the bottom so that the majority of the paint stays in that area. It might look like almost no paint is being left on the model, that's a good thing. This dries quite quickly and I'm working between the shield and the robe. As they dry, I'm back for another layer, but each time I move to a new coat, I paint less of the total area and work towards the bottom. Is that another garbage explanation? Check these finished photos again and see what I mean. More paint here, less paint here. That's much easier. I need to increase the amount of visual references in my videos with the finished model, I think. By this stage, our video will be getting a little long in the fang, and if I haven't covered a specific element on this model, that's okay. Pick a spot at the end when I display it, hit pause, and take a look. The colour might change, but the techniques haven't. Go from the base colour, to a shadow, to your highlights, and I'm confident you can nail it. With the head of our marine, I've elected to go with a pale skin, because I figure being raised on an ice planet would lead to pale skin. But, as I paint an entire army, I will mix this up, and if my marines were on a prolonged campaign somewhere exposed to greater heat, then I'd probably give them a healthy tan. The glow of the plasma pistol is the same technique that I used in this video up here, where I painted a bust of Horace Lupercal for one of our Discord members. Whilst I'm layering and glazing here, how about I tell you a little bit about our Patreon and also our Discord. Flashing Badger is supported financially by these magnificent individuals at only a dollar a month and they get behind the scenes sneak peeks and like in this case, every now and then, one of them might just get a model painted by me for them to keep. And over in our Discord is a thriving community of around 100 painters of all different levels and members of the hobby that enjoy bantering back and forth, showing off their completed models and taking part in our painting competitions that have the greatest prize available. Me. I paint models for you. For free. What a guy. But that's enough talk about me. Let's talk about this guy. Let's check out our finished Space Wolf. I've had heaps of fun today getting to paint my first ever Space Wolf, and I'm even more excited knowing that now I get to post this to someone who will have it feature in their games and sit on their display shelf with the rest of their army. If you'd like to see a particular painting guide, don't stress, you don't need to send me any models, but instead you can leave me your suggestion below in the comments. While you're here, you can check out the rest of my channel and see if I've already painted that miniature or faction, and I'd love for you to consider hitting the like button because that helps recommend this video to others in our hobby. Now importantly, a very fitting way to end this video is to show off some of the amazing companions from our Discord members. Thank you so much and I'll see you on the next video.